What it is, everyone. We're back with another top five exclusive right here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. I am Brandy. And today on the top five, we'll be talking about our top five letdowns. These are the films that we were highly anticipating on watching, and then when we finally did, damn it, it didn't live up to our expectations. That's so good, yeah. So, um, did you want to start off first or me? (laughs) Sure. Uh, number five, uh, a movie from a director that uh, has done a lot of great stuff, a lot of kind of weird stuff. That's Steven Soderbergh. And oh. he made a movie that was an homage to the kind of films that I adore the most. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> the Good German. Yeah. Have you seen this movie? Oh, yeah. Holy yeah. crap, it is terrible. <laughs> it is so uh, unfathomably bad. Yeah. And I mean, the writer, Paul Atancio, I don't really know how to pronounce his last name, but he's like Oscar nominated for, for Quiz Show and Donnie right. Brasco. He's a respectable dude. Obviously, Soderbergh knows how to make a movie. The cast is insane. Yeah, insanely like, good. There's no reason for this movie to stop. As hard as it does, but it's almost unwatchable. You know, it's so awkward. This this movie, I actually blind bought it because I was like, it's Steven Soderbergh. <laughs> it's in reminiscent of a classic film. Yeah. I'm all over this. And then I watched it and I was like, oh my god. Like I was so like I was very excited because I like this kind of experimental throwback. Yeah, it, like very st- I like really stylized stuff if you can pull it off. Like right. Kate Blanchett looks like she should have been a star oh, no, in the yeah, 30s anyway. Yeah. Like but it's it has the <laughs> it's surface. It's laughably terrible. It has a, the surface of those classic films, but it doesn't have the heart of those no classic films. No heart at all. I mean, God, you don't swear in a classic film. You don't like show like sex on screen and everything like that. But, yeah. I don't know. It was weird. It was like they were like doing some crazy like cover song to to cla- to those classic movies, and it just <laughs> was the terrible, most terrible thing. Really, ever. really terrible. This Remarkably gonna, terrible. It's gonna be a good top five. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to my number five film. Okay, I have to say that there are a lot of sequels in these, uh, in my, in yeah, my list. Yeah, yeah. Um, my number five film is from 2010, and it's Iron Man 2. Wow. I really liked the first Iron Man. Okay. I thought it was just great all around. Iron Man 2, to me, just, it, it just like the previous mention that we had, it had everything, like all the elements, but they just didn't gel together mm-hmm. as well as the first one. Um, like Mickey Rourke, right? Mickey Rourke in that film, I thought I was like, oh great, he's gonna be a great freaking you know bad guy in, in the movie. Mm-hmm. He doesn't do anything in the entire movie. All he does yeah, is work but on his machine. Yeah, Jeff Bridges and in the then, first one. And then in the very end, <laughs> in the very end, with the final showdown, the final showdown, there was no final showdown. Don Cheadle replacing Terrence Howard. I mean, I, I love you, Don Cheadle. Do? I love Don Cheadle and everything, but the chemistry between Don Cheadle and Robert Downey Jr. Like was not character. the same. It absolutely felt like a new character. It just didn't have the the spark, the liveliness that made the first Iron Man I that guess. great. I guess I forgot a lot of people say this, and for me, like I liked the first Iron Man, but I don't know what y'all saw in the first one that made the second one so disappointing. Because I thought they were pretty similar. Oh, we can we yeah. can get into it. <laughs> All right, I know you're gonna agree with me on number, my number four, though. At least that it's a terrible film. I don't uh-huh. know how much you were anticipating it. I was anticipating a lot because the main role was originally written for Tom Cruise. It was switched to be Angelina Jolie. And I was quite excited about it. Salt. This movie makes no sense. (laughs) Like, it is so stupid oh. every plot twist that comes is like i don't even know if i can really use the term plot twist because that would imply that there was a followable plot going right. along but I, by the end of the film you still have no idea like what individual characters motivations were why anyone did what they did why like how one scene follows another like i know you hate this movie i fucking and, hate this movie i, I was so movie. excited for it because like you really like they're there aren't as many action films starring women and the ones that are tend to be something more like you know colombiana where it's an excuse for her to be naked the whole time and i was just kind of really excited to watch one in like the you know alien tradition where the Mm -hmm. role was gender blind supposedly right um (sighs) i didn't really get that vibe and i didn't really like understand anything about it supposedly they're making salt too now which to me is just like oh my god why when i when i walked out of the theater (laughs) after watching this movie i wanted to punch someone it was so bad like just everything you were absolutely right the motivations is she a good guy is she a bad guy all the the action i thought was terrible one or the other like like, from scene to scene with no she's like this indestructible freaking robot like an entire freaking army like goes after and she doesn't get one freaking scratch she survives a car (laughs) crash and walks away like oh my god she just walks away unharmed i can feel your blood pressure yeah, rising just... i'm really almost sorry i brought it up oh no no it's fine it's fine it's good 
All right. Read the review. Read read my review. <laughs> and that's that's What's all there is to it. What's your number four? <laughs> okay, my number four film. Uh, I have to cheat a little bit because it's a pair of films. It's The Matrix Reloaded oh, and The Matrix shit. Revolutions. Oh, shit. I didn't even think of these. That's a, yeah. The mm -hmm. Matrix was, to me, it, it was a freaking great movie. It, it redefined mm -hmm. the action film. It redefined the science fiction film. I think the first is just like we can call it a modern classic at right. this point. Then the other two, it was just like it took everything that was awesome about the first movie and made it not awesome. <laughs> I mean, all the fight scenes were like cartoonish. Um, fight scenes shouldn't even have mattered because Neo was like a freaking god. He could have just flown <laughs> away right in the beginning and just it's, took uh, them all out. I gotta say, you're setting yourself up for failure if you make your main character that like godlike. Absolutely, like I liked some of the action in these movies, but I thought the I mean, story. Was the main the, part. Yeah, the, the story was like, like I, oh, it was like so muddled. The the chase scene in in part two was, it was okay, it was all right, mm -hmm. but man, and then the architect when he's revealed is like this old dude in this like <laughs> like in this creepster mode in this room watching all these TVs. Yeah, it's just oh my god, it just uh Let's just, okay. And it, I don't know. I, I mean, I tend to think of these as an interesting failed experiment and not get so angry about it. And I can still watch the first one and like enjoy it without without it being too tainted but yeah yeah <laughs> I, it's it's harder for me because i watch that one and i just know where the story goes it's like oh my god why yeah. all I'm right sorry that that happened to you that's okay okay um number three i don't hate this movie at all i thought it was enjoyable when i watched it the first time but considering how much i love the first one again with this following the sequel right, right. um harold and kumar escape from guantanamo bay <laughs> big disappointment for me even yeah. though it wasn't like i hated it you know it was just like the first one is so funny and yeah. there's a kind of like there's this buzz this like zany madcapness mm -hmm. that works in the first one that doesn't work in either of the sequels i don't mm -hmm. think um, despite individual scenes being kind of funny and stuff, there isn't that like through line. There isn't as much a, as much heart as mm -hmm. the individual dilemmas that that Harold and Kumar are facing in the first one. They don't actually have that background of bringing in actual like race issues, which I think works surprisingly well in the first film. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, y'all know I love Harold and Kumar. Go to White Castle. Right. I've had it on a couple top fives because it really is like one of my favorite movies, and. The yeah. sequels are just not as good. I liked, not yeah. even close. I liked. I mean, I'm I'm right with you. I think the first one is very very funny. There's this sort of like compactness, like <clears throat> this tightness about the first one, and then the mm -hmm. second one they just kind of like let it loose. Yeah, and it just That's it a good went way to over. Put it. it went over the top in a bad way. Mm -hmm. I mean, there that scene where they like see George Bush. It's like what the hell? Like where where are we going with this? You know? Mm -hmm. And they they like try to re. Uh, God, I can't even like it. I can't even. There talk has about to it. be a specific goal, and each scene in your movie has to have the characters going towards that goal. Mm -hmm. The first movie does that perfectly. The sequels think the goal is to be funny. Yeah. And it's like being funny is secondary to having a tight script. And they fell back with a lot of a lot of over the top toilet humor that just really was yeah. not necessary. Um it's too bad because they're great characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Okay. My number three film from nineteen ninety nine. I was highly, highly anticipating this. Star Wars Episode <laughs> One, The Phantom Menace. Okay, this is my thing, okay? This is my thing. We were a little too young to be in the middle of the craziness that mm -hmm. was the original trilogy. Let, so Let's be clear. We were a lot too young. Okay, a lot too young. We were a lot too young to be in the middle of the craziness, okay? So when the trailer for Phantom Menace came out, I was like, yes, this is going to be our trilogy. This is going to be our, you know, our story. We're going to relive it and we're going to experience everything that everyone else experienced in the 70s and early 80s. And then I watched it and oh man, it was just, it's so much great potential just let down. There are a few good things, okay? Liam Neeson I thought was awesome in it. Darth Maul liked sure, him in it. Um, Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi, sure, you know, whatever. Believable, at least. Jake Lloyd. <laughs> oh, man, she's probably maybe one of the worst kid actors <laughs> ever. George Lucas took everything that was... He took everything about the first trilogy in this film, retconned the entire mythology of the Force and everything, and it was just, like, so many inconsistencies. It was just a really, really bad letdown for me. And a lot of people, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ugh. All right. Uh, <laughs> my number two, again, a movie that I wasn't um, expecting to be like one of my favorites, but I was looking forward to it. I thought it would be a fun throwback sci-fi kind of a thing, and it ended up being my least favorite movie of all time, wow. <laughs> and that is Splice, which I have. I think the review I wrote about it is still has like the most comments of anything I've ever written uh -huh. on the site because. Holy shit, I hate that movie. <laughs> it is reprehensible. Like, it, it, it's shoddily made, which is bad enough, right? And it has these, like, horrible retro scenes where these scientists are sitting there, like, typing into a computer being uh -huh. like, if only we can type the right thing and get the right code, we can do this and that. And it's just like, I don't, I'm pretty sure that's not how science works. Um, just like Adrian Brody kicking back in a chair being like this at his computer until he gets the right combo of things. You right. Know? And then, of course, the themes are just like, uh, really problematic gender right. stuff going on. One of the most gratuitous rape scenes I've ever mm -hmm. seen. And just like this twist ending that is twist ending that is right. so insulting to the viewer uh -huh. that you wouldn't see it coming a mile away and that you would be in any way satisfied by that from a storyline perspective like i can't say enough about what how little i understand that there are people out there that saw this movie and liked it right because it is horrific <laughs> you know i actually caught this film on tv i caught the last half on tv and i stopped and watched it for a little bit and i was like yeah i can see how randy <laughs> <laughs> would not like this film. The movie's just really, really weird. And like you said, the twist that they decide to take is both like, both like, you don't, com incomprehensible and really disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'm. I, so, fuck wow. you, everyone who's in that movie. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I still, although Sarah Polly, I'm really looking forward to take this waltz, but don't. Adrian Brody, I'm, I'm still with you. <laughs> okay, my number two and my number one films are big letdowns for me because I hold a personal place in my heart for them. My number mm -hmm. two film is from 2007, and it is Spider-Man 3. Aww. That's another good I one. I was <laughs> the biggest... I'm, so I'm like silly. was the biggest Spider-Man fan growing up. I read like the like every issue of the comic that came out. I enjoyed the first film. I really, really liked the second film. I mean, to me, Spider-Man Two, Superman, and I the think Dark Sp Knight. Spider-Man Two is one of the best comic is, book movies yeah, exactly. ever. Yeah, exactly. For sure. I, absolutely. So, number three, I was highly anticipating it, and then man, just uh, just everything about it. There was way too many characters. Um, the I, I just did not want to see emo freaking peter parker that's the number one thing right that scene emo peter that parker, scene why? is just absolutely why? like they were trying to recreate the uh, raindrops are falling my head from the second film but it's just it just went completely <laughs> out of like left field not to mention um, that the entire plot hinges off of like the biggest coincidence ever that it yes. would happen to be right. this character right. who gets infected with whatever absolutely. it's like it just, we already had the coincidence we're meant to buy and it happens when peter parker gets bit by the radioactive mm -hmm. spider like that's all you get you get right. one inciting incident that's that crazy it it just feels like the the filmmakers and the producers and everyone just wanted to force way too many things into the film. Mm -hmm. It really felt like two two movies packed into one. And oh yeah. man, just uh, it's too bad. Yeah, it's just, too bad that the reboot looks so silly from its. Uh, I know. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but we'll the second one still Spider Man Two again and be happy. Yeah. All right, my number one. I thought you would have this for your number one too, Phantom Menace. Like I thought that that would be like no brainer, and yeah. just like for the amount of hype to the amount of like, really. Yeah. Just <laughs> and I, you know, I, I really like the original trilogy. I'm not like a diehard obsessed with everything Star Wars fan by any means, but I definitely saw the have seen the originals multiple times and mm -hmm. think they're great. Uh, our, I our Chewbacca. I think, I was, I think our... I was 16 when The Phantom Menace came out, and it was just like, I was so, so looking forward to it. And then I didn't even bother seeing it in the theater after oh. people started talking about it. Yeah. Like, I, I later saw it on video because I was just, like, so disappointed even by the... <laughs> The idea that it wouldn't be the best movie ever. Like, uh, the, it was the CGI was overdone. Our Chewbacca was Jar Jar Binks. You know, <laughs> Jar Jar Binks. The you worst can't character. put it like that. Don't put don't put that on Chewbacca. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Don't make him responsible for Jar Jar. Binks. Just probably the worst character in the history of movies. Just oh man, just okay. It's okay. All it's right. okay. But it was it was so bad at the time. That disappointment. We'll remember it. Yes, it was absolutely. A 
it yeah phantom menace was not my number one because my number one film is indiana jones and the kingdom <laughs> of the crystal skull okay you know i love the original indiana yep. jones trilogy to me it was mm. arguably raiders of lost ark is like one of my all-time favorite films i love the second one i love the third one and then the fourth one just flew off the freaking handles Again, just like Phantom Menace. It just Menace, doesn't go. It just, it's just just not the same it, kind of movie. Exactly. It feels like a bunch of people mm -hmm. trying to rekindle the spark that made them successful before, and it, it just absolutely did not work. Harrison Ford, he looked, I mean, he, he was okay, but he was a shell of himself. <laughs> Karen Allen really was brought in just to remind people, hey, Karen Allen. Um, yeah. Shia LaBeouf. Mutt Williams, why do we need that character? Um, this is the first time anyone, as soon as anyone suggested naming him Mutt Williams, it should have been like, exactly. we're going to get a C scan for exactly. you right now, like, can we make sure you have another stroke? I mean, I wanted to see some classic scenes, but instead I, I see Shia LaBeouf swinging through the vines with CGI monkeys, I see Indiana Jones jumping into a freaking refrigerator. I'm feeling a little bit of a theme with just like established filmmakers going a little too crazy with CGI and right. what they have available to them and just I so so wanted to love that movie but I just couldn't Where are the people who are keeping um, these guys in check? I know. Where are right? your script editors? So and I mean the fifth one I'm really really like hesitant about. I hope it doesn't happen. I don't I kind of think it won't. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay. So that does it for our top 5 letdowns. Please let us know what your biggest uh, cinematic letdowns were. I'm sure there's a lot of them out there. And um, let us know at mcguffinpodcast.com. And we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.